Okay, it's a little bit windy, so I hope it's not going to mess with the microphone too much. Uh, this, I just want to show real quick how I make my penetrations through my IBC grow beds uh, for installation of my auto siphons. Or if you want to use a standpipe and a timer method, you could use the same method. This is just to do the penetration. Okay. I've already pre-drilled my hole. Uh, it's a one and a quarter inch hole. Uh, pre-drilled with a hole saw. I've got a number 18 O-ring. There's a little bit of debris in here. I'm going to be washing these out so I'm not all that worried about debris. I just want it out of the way. I've deburred my hole. Uh, gotten rid of any build up around the edges from drilling the hole. A lot of times the plastic leaves a lot there. Doesn't cut that clean with the hole saws I have. Got a one inch male electrical uh, PVC conduit fitting. Uh, it works for Schedule 40 PVC, Schedule 200 or whatever it is, the light duty stuff. Um, as long as it's a one inch PVC, it should go to this fitting no problem. The one end is threaded. I like to put my O-ring on the male side. Uh, the female side, I don't really care if anything leaks through it. And it takes a little bit of work to get it around there. It's got to stretch it just a little bit, but there it goes. Uh, like I said, the female, I don't care if water leaks around it a little bit because it's on the inside anyway. So I take my one inch fitting, pop it up through. It's a nice, good, snug fit. And then I take my the female inside, like I said, I don't really care if this one leaks. Where's the water going to go? The O-ring sealing against the one inch fitting and the bottom, so no water is going to escape underneath. The female fitting doesn't really matter if it's sealed because it's inside the, the grow bed. It will seal good enough for what you want to do with it. All right. Now then, I don't glue my stand pipes in. Uh, that way, if I ever have to do any maintenance, it makes it easy to, to get everything apart and out. Uh, or if I have to change the height of them or whatever so I can play with them. Um, I used to, on my indoor setup, I'd cut a quarter inch wide groove so I could take a piece of quarter inch flat bar and stick down in and use it as a wrench to tighten and loosen. Hand tight generally gives me enough to seal against that fitting. So I got where I stopped doing that. Uh, if I have to get this out, I can always stick some needle nose or something down in here and, and, and get it loose. Hopefully I'll never have to take the fitting itself out. Stand pipe I can pop out to adjust, pop back in, uh, do whatever I need to do with. Uh, only reason I'd ever have for taking this back out is if I decide to go to a, a stand pipe uh, ebb and flow timed system. And that would be just so I could drill a hole down near the base for the water to drain out of. Uh, since I'm planning on auto siphons right now, that's all I have to do. Uh, on the bottom, I put a piece of one inch PVC, an elbow, uh, a piece leading over to my actual drain pipe, and another uh, elbow, and that's that. All said and done, once I assemble my bell siphon, it's a four inch uh, PVC surround, uh, two inch bell, and that's all it takes. I'm, I'm going to do another video on the actual. Um, I need to trim those. Another video on the actual bell siphon assembly. But there's how I do my penetrations. I don't have any leaks doing it that way. Everything works out pretty good. I've been really happy so far uh, with all the ones I've done that way, which right now is mainly my indoor setup. But I have done multiple penetrations like this inside. I've got three. 18-gallon uh, totes, that I'm, or 12-gallon totes, I'm sorry, that I'm using for grow beds that are penetrated this way. Uh, my biofilter inside is penetrated in this manner. My sump indoors is pre penetrated in this manner. And I've never had any leakage problems with any of it. So that's how I like to do it. There you go.